The Great Space Race is Kenzer and Company's exciting new board game set in the cold, dark reaches of space. Players representing pilots of different alien species compete to be the first ship to complete three laps around a course to the stars, a track littered with hazards such as mines, black holes, space amoebas, and more. A player can also win by being the last ship in play when the smoke clears. A lot rests on the pilot's shoulders, for the home worlds of the losers will be purged and snuffed from existence. With stakes so high, it's every pilot for him or herself. Sometimes competing in the great space race is more about surviving turn to turn than ever seeing the finish line. No two games of the great space race are ever alike, and each game presents its own unique challenges. Pilots must manage the dispersion of special equipment, events, and most importantly, other players bent on their ruin. So, what comes in the hefty five pound box? Let's take a look. Crammed in the box, you'll find the following items. Six different colored tokens representing each ship. 186 cards comprising three different decks. 226 special die cut counters. And two dice, of course. A beautiful full color rule book with illustrations and examples of play that'll have you playing quickly. Eight unique ship console cards. These represent the bridge of each pilot ship where speed, shields, and hull points are controlled. More about the console in a moment. And finally, the board itself. It's six square feet and huge. Before the game starts, each player selects a ship. Each one has its own unique name and characteristics. For example, the ever popular Space Guppy has a neutronium power plant which allows it to recharge its shields faster than other ships. The Octopoid is equipped with tentacles and can grab nearby mines and place them in its cargo hold to be reused on other unsuspecting ships. There are eight different ships in all. Except for the special ability description, each ship console is otherwise identical. Each ship has two equipment bays where special equipment can be installed, enhancing the ship's abilities. These come in the form of equipment cards drawn during the game. Examples of equipment cards are tractor beams, repulsion cannons, guided torpedoes, and more. The dashboard on the console shows the ship's current shield level, hull points, and speed. Shields help a ship absorb damage. They go down as you take damage and regenerate between turns. Hull points represent the physical integrity of the ship itself. You don't want to take hull damage. They're permanent, and once they're gone, your ship explodes and you're out of the race. Speed, of course, is how fast your ship is moving. The faster you're moving, the more cards you get to play each turn. More on that later. Next on the console is the command decision pool. You'll get a certain number of command decision chits to play here. The amount is dependent on how many players there are. Command decision counters represent the pilot's ability to belay an order to avoid tragedy, such as hitting a mine or another ship. Use them wisely. Once they're gone, you won't be getting any more. The mine pool is where your available mines are stored. Your mine counters will be placed there and transferred to the board as you deploy them. The most important part of the ship's console are the action slots. There are five slots. I'll explain what these are in a moment, but first we need to talk about action cards. Action cards are what you use to control and equip your ship. There are three types. Movement cards. These represent the movement and direction changes your ship must make during the phase it's revealed. Maintenance cards. These cards give the pilot an opportunity to manipulate the ship itself. Raise shields to maximum power. Reload mines or activate or deactivate special equipment. Event cards. These are what make each game unpredictable. They come in two flavors. Standard events. Bad. Major events. Worse. Events are played immediately and bring such things into play as the dreaded space amoeba, acidic cloud, wormholes, black holes, and other things pilots tend to fear. Let's quickly look at how action cards are used. As I mentioned previously, the ship console has five action slots. During the placement phase, pilots must place action cards on the slots corresponding with the ship's current speed. The faster the ship is moving, the more action cards you must place. For example, a ship moving at a rate of one would place one action card on the action slot indicated. A ship moving at a rate of two would place two cards on the appropriate slots a speed of three, three cards, and so forth. 
During each phase of the turn, game pilots reveal the action cards they've placed as each action slot is resolved, with players going in the order of initiative. As cards are revealed, the pilot must perform the action on the card. Let's look at some examples. The Space Guppy is moving at a rate of 3, so during the placement phase, the pilot chooses 3 cards from his hand and places them in the slots marked with a 3. Later, during the reveal phase, the pilot turns the card over in the current slot and performs the action. In this example, the pilot had decided to perform a tricky maneuver with his speeding ship, a side slip left. The pilot moves his ship using the diagram on the card. This one indicates he must slip 4 hexes to the left and then forward 1 hex. After concluding his movement, he may make a facing change to the left or right or remain facing straight ahead. The small orange mine symbol under the diagram indicates that the ship may drop a mine at any point during its movement, which could make for a bad day for any ships behind him. As you may have noticed, pilots must make their movement decisions in advance. Movement can be as simple as a straight shot, move forward four hexes, or as complex as a twisting barrel roll. This video has provided a brief overview of the basic game mechanics. For more detailed information, you can download the complete set of rules on our website at www.kenzerco.com. You can also download free web enhancements such as optional rules, new counters, and any current errata and answers to frequently asked questions. You can buy The Great Space Race at your local game or hobby store. And if you don't have a store near you, you can order it direct on our online web store. So fire up your engines and take your position on the starting line, and remember, the fate of your home world depends on you.